Good morning guys, um, it's uh, August, it's uh, 7 a.m. Uh, I'm off the house towards the swim. It's a lovely August morning. I'm going to do a session and I'm trying out a new bait. I'm going back to one of my old favorite tandem baits. This one is called The One. Very nice bag by the way. It's a seafood boilie. Looks interesting, smells interesting. Let's find out what the fish thinks. I live right at the doorstep of my swim. And one of the advantages with that is that if the conditions looks nice from my kitchen window, I can be fishing within five minutes. I just need to pick up some basic equipment and do the one minute walk. Here you can see a behavior that you only get from a high quality bait. Green picking up boilies without any hesitation. But a factor you have to take into account is the time of the day you're fishing. Early mornings you get much less hesitation in general and midday even the best baits can be rejected. As mentioned earlier, this is a seafood boiling, but what is special about it is that it contains fermented krill. Krill is in my opinion one of the best options for bream fishing and a fermented krill boilie sounds very promising. This is a very nice bream, one of the bigger and older ones in my swim. Living right at the lake also gives me plenty of opportunities to pre-bait and I pre-bait on a daily basis with corn and a mixture of leftover boilies. A couple of days before I decide to use a specific boilie I might switch but I try to give them different things so they get used to finding new sorts of boilies. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time. I often get comments about what people watching my videos see as a very large number of bream and tench, but that is very far from the truth. In reality, there are very few bream and I only catch them after a long period of pre-baiting. I would say that I get a bream once every fourth session and I rarely catch more than one. If you want to take a look at how I prepare my particles, you can follow the link in the corner or at the end of the video. One reason behind people thinking that I catch a lot is obviously that I 
don't publish sessions when the fish doesn't show up. I only publish one session in about 20, and that is to get the best and most interesting footage I can. This way, but it's not that easy. You're complicating things for me. No, it's not that easy. Maybe just a little time can heal me, but it doesn't feel the way. What are you doing to me? This is a very, very nice fish. Uh, dark, probably around three kilos, and it looks as if it's uh, blind on the left eye. This is really a personality when it comes to bream. There are a couple of things that are special about these big ones. An observation from my lake is that I'm more likely to find them in shallow waters during the summer. The smaller ones stay in deeper water the entire season, even though they might do occasional visits closer to the shore. Something else that is special about these big ones is that they more easily respond to pre-baiting. If I keep feeding them, they are more likely to stay both during a session and over the season. But the smaller ones, they come and go. They are much more unpredictable. At the same time, the bigger ones are quicker learners. After they have been caught a couple of times, they change their behavior. They start to hesitate when they see the hook bait. To me, it seems as if they can't entirely say no to the hook bait in the long run, even though they can see that something is wrong. But they do learn to identify the rig and they will pick up other baits as long as they have an option. But when they run out of options, they do pick up the hook bait. Left me in the dark, dark. I've never seen an overfed swim in terms of getting too much to eat and leaving. But I often see that I put out too much bait and they don't pick up the hook bait. As you see here, everything is gone except the hook bait. So one conclusion is that it might be better for the fish to clear the table before you give them more things to eat. So they can't avoid your hook bait. But these reflections are made in relation to old and experienced fish and what I see in my swim might not necessarily be the same in your waters. And again, a krill boily really delivered a nice catch for me. Yeah, I'm just that stupid. Maybe just a little time can make you change your mind about us. I thought that we were meant to be. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Ooh, ooh, ooh.